without having to do it. That's the passive means. So, cradle, the head and neck. Mostly the head, because we're just doing gross range of motion. And I go through the ranges of motion that are available. Flexion, I'm feeling for quality and quantity. Drop the head piece. That's your head. Drop her back, to, back into extension. And then lateral flexion. Notice I'm being as efficient as possible with my movement. I'm letting the stool do everything by using my arms. And then rotation. Nice and slowly. We're just going to end range. We're feeling for quality and quantity. Doesn't move, doesn't hurt. That's passive range of motion. Like said. Active range of motion, simple. She does everything. Look all the way up towards the ceiling. Look down towards the floor, bring your chin to chest. There's a little restriction. A lot of restriction. Look over that shoulder, as far as you can go. I would be standing in front of the patient so I could see exactly what's going on. Look over this shoulder. There we go. Try to bring one ear to your shoulder, and then the other. And again, I'd be standing in front of the patient so I could see exactly what's going on. I would never stand at the side. Um, I just didn't want to block her. So that's active range of motion. Don't worry too much about the numbers. We're really just looking for symmetry, quality, and for flexion and extension, which are single movements. We're looking to see if they can get their, you know, their head just about parallel. Either way. Just about. You don't have to necessarily take a uh, measurement here. For what resisted range of motion, and there's a couple there are a couple of quiz questions about you know, why you would do these and what different types of information you would get from resisted versus uh, active versus passive. There's information in the notes. Um, so I'm not necessarily going to go into that. We'll talk about that in the lecture. But resisted, I'll tell you the easiest way to do it. Set it nice and straight. Keep your head right there. Don't let me move it. Remember I, when we talked about the motor test, I wanted you to, to, to say that. This is all she needs to do. One thing. Keep your head there. Don't let me move it. Now, I test the extensors, the flexors, stabilizing her, the lateral flexors on one side, isometric contractions, the lateral flexors on the other, and then keep your head there. Don't let me rotate it. Try to turn her head one way. So technically, it's not range of motion because we're not moving anything, but it's resisted cervical movements, or resisted uh, motion of the cervical spine. So we call it resisted range of motion. So technically, it's not the best thing to call it, but that's probably the only thing we have. So I want you to start thinking about what different information each one of those will be active, passive, resistant.